Hey guys, I haven't done, I've been working lately on my Spanish podcast and I sort of stopped like making videos, speaking in English. So I decided to do a new video showing you guys how to create a layout using TradeStation 10, which is one of the two brokers that I use. I use two brokers, but the one that I'm going to be focusing on will be TradeStation, which is the one you guys see on screen. Now, something that I noticed is that there's not that many videos of people actually using the platform, TradeStation. Um, TradeStation in itself, and their YouTube channel, they have videos on how to use the platform. But I thought that I could do a faster video because some people just don't, don't want to sit down like an hour to watch the video for things that I know for a fact they can take less. So I'm going to try to simplify how to create a layout in TradeStation. And the way that I'm going to do it to make it easier for you and me is that I'm going to create the same layout that you guys are watching right now. This is the, literally the screen that I, uh, my layout. I have my times and sales in the left side. I have my chart in the middle with the volume under. And I have the matrix which I utilize to put orders and stuff. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do to make it easier for everybody. So let's say you guys just created uh, a trade station account, which you need $500 to do so. You After you um, create an account with them, you have to fund the account with at least $500, and then you get access to download the software. So once you download the software, you don't see this. What you get is this. Once you open your um, broker for the first time, this is what you get. Nothing. So this is where a lot of people get lost. Even I got a little bit confused. But once you like start trying stuff, you can eventually do it. And it gets it becomes really simple because it just is an endless of of things that you can possibly do with TradeStation 10. So let's go back to my layout again this is my layout and this is the one that i'm going to show you guys and i hope um it gives you guys an idea on what to do so let's get it going so remember you want to start like this once you open so something that i need you guys to understand is that trace station um 10 and i keep saying trace station 10 because they have a previous version called trace station 9 i have never used that one the one that I use is the newest one, which is TradeStation 10. And for people asking me, I'm using a simulated account. Even though today is a holiday, it's President's Day. I'm going to use uh, the simulated account because I don't need to use my real account to show you guys. So, here we go. The first thing that you want to do when you start a layout in any broker, but let's focus on TradeStation 10, is that you need a chart. You need to have a physical representation of a of a of a stock, right? So you can see this. Is, they call all um, this section apps, and apps they use uh, the different tools that they have for you to create your layout. So the first one would be chart analysis. Chart analysis is literally the chart. You click, and automatically they'll give you a chart. Before I keep going, you guys will see uh, different stocks. And tickers that show up in the throughout the video. This is not a recommendation to buy or sell. I'm just using it to as an educational purpose. So I don't want to hear nobody say in the comments, "Oh, I told you, you said Israel to to buy or sell." No, I, I didn't say that shit. I didn't. So this is how it goes. Once you create the layout and you open the chart analysis, uh, you will have to figure it out where you want the chart. But again, I'm going to do it as the way that I created mine to make it easier. So let's go and do it again. Okay. You go to apps. You click chart analysis. Boom. You have the chart analysis. And what I do is, boom, since I only work with one screen when I'm trading, I make it a little bit bigger. And as, as you can see right now, we're looking at Tesla, and it's a daily chart. And let me, yeah, we're going to leave a daily chart. So right now, you're probably asking, Israel, it looks very beautiful. Um, It's very amazing. But 
I need to see volume, you know. Where can I get the volume? Why I get the shard without any volume? Simple. Because Trace Station 10 has volume, but as a study. So what, what you do is, you here see the time frame. You guys know what it is. Different time frames of the shards. The drawing tools. You guys know that you can do trend lines and stuff like that. But I'm not going to do a video about that. So you go here to studies. Click at studies. And when you do that, it will show you the different um, um, studies that they have. The moving average, blah, blah, all that great stuff. But I'm going to focus on volume. So what I did, I clicked and I press V so I can get the volume. Only the one that says volume. So we find it here. Boom. Click. Voila. Now you have it, the volume. So you got that out of the way. Let's say you're one of those fancy people that like to have like moving average and B1. All we, they, that you would do is simple. You go to studies, add study, and you will look for something. Let's say EMA. Moving exponential average. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Moving EMA. Pop, and now you have it. Now, I want you guys to know something. Uh, there's something very cool about uh, the shard in Trace Station 10 is that with the arrows in your in your computer, PC or, or, or um, laptop, you can zoom out or zoom in. See how cool? I literally, all I'm doing is the arrows on my laptop, I'm just clicking in. To go to zoom in, I, I click up. And to zoom out, I press down. Simple as that. You can move it with your um, uh, left and right. With your just by tapping the arrows, but if you if you're going to do that, you just might as well. You see this thing here? You can drag it. See, see how easy it is. You can drag it. When you zoom in, clicking, uh, tapping the the top arrow in your keyboard. Um, this is a new function that Trace Station 10 did not have. They literally made this um, update like probably like a week or two ago, or maybe three. And this this is really cool. That you see here, you can literally do this now. You couldn't do this like a month ago. So, so if you wanted to get closer, you have to literally tap the arrows. But you don't longer have to do that with the keyboard. You can literally do this. Now, another cool thing that they did that you couldn't do uh, was that you can play around. Like, you see the hand here? Is if you leave it uh, out uh, outside the candle, you see it's like a, a cross type of thing. But if you put it on top of the candlestick, you see it's like a hand. So if you click it, you can literally play around with it. See how cool you can like move it and you can like go a little bit faster to the left side if you want to see a prize or anything, right? So let's say, um, Israel, what if like you messing around it ends up like this and you can even see the price? It's very simple. All you have to do is you click right, you right click and you put and you click on reset scaling range and automatically would do it for you see you can do this entire message and all you have to do is boop, and the shard does it for you which is an is an amazing quality and yeah that's literally how you create uh, a shard layout and here you can see the different time frames you got one minute you got two minutes three minutes four minutes they have even ticks and something that a lot of brokers don't have the trade station 10 has is that they have seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Some people use it. I have a friend of mine named Joel that he trades large caps that he uses uh, 15 seconds. And some brokers do not offer that option. Trade Station 10 does. Uh, you have the daily. Um, mostly what I use is uh, I use the daily chart to do my technical analysis. I use the five minute chart so I can like. Uh, trade some movements and stuff but once the market opens I use a one minute chart because I trade penny stocks which are low cap stocks any stocks between uh, $10 or less even though some people consider penny stocks as well stocks below $20 but everybody has their criteria so anyway now that we have the chart right now we need times and sales correct because you need to see um, the orders like what time people bought at uh, what price in the amount so what you do you go again to apps and where you think it is right here times and sales is very simple and when you go here 
you see that they give you a bunch of stuff. And what I do is I put my tangent cells to the right, I mean to the left side. And oop, I make it a little bit smaller. And then I make it longer like this because I like to see a lot of information. But as you can see, there's a lot of crap that you don't need. So I'm, for this video is to simplify things. So Israel, how do you get rid of all this stuff? And necessary stuff, in my opinion, simple. You, you, you make it big, right? And then you go to settings, you go to columns, and you got two options, quote bar and detail bar. I always get confused, which one is which. I only find out once I click, quote bar. So automatically this lets me know that I'm here. That quote bar is here in the top uh, left corner. So now you see like things like bit tick, net change, bid and ask, which is important bid and ask, but I use it in my matrix, which I'm going to show you in a different part of the video. So this is what I'm going to do. I need to get rid of a bunch of stuff there because it just takes too much time. It's times in sales. All I want to see is the ticker, the price, and the size, which means the quantity of shares that were bought at a given time. So what I do is I'm going to get rid of on the top part first, which is the quote bar. And I'm going to I'm going to leave the symbol, which is the ticker. Bit tick, I don't even know for what what, what you use that for. Net change, I don't care. Bid, I don't want that there. Ask, I don't want it. And then I'm left with four things. Symbol, I like to have the high on top. See, you can like move it up and down. See, very simple. So after the symbol, I got the high. Then I like to have the low next to it. And then for last, I like to have the last. Last means the, pre the price that is currently in. So as you can see here, you will see how all these things that we have here are going to be eliminated and only these are going to be kept. Look, once I press OK, boom, done. See, very simple. I got the ticker, the higher, the high, the low, and the last. Now, as you can see here, you have a lot of BS that you don't need. You, you literally don't need this there. stuff like condition, what that even means. So I'll go to settings, columns, and I go to detail. So uh, I keep uh, my time, of course. The type, I don't care the type. It's a trade. So as you can see here, it shows you trade, the, the type of trade. Like you don't, who cares? Remove. And then you keep the type, the time. I keep the price and I keep the size. Exchange, I don't care the exchange in which I'm buying because usually what I do is I leave the um, the smart route, the intelligent route, which is it finds the, the stock in whatever price that you want at a particular moment. And whatever exchange has it, that's how your order will, will be fulfilled. So you don't need this exchange. Some people use it. Uh, people, Some people that focus on a, a particular um, um, market exchange. But I usually trade NASDAQs and um, New York Stock Exchange stocks. I don't do it uh, on purpose. It just happens that the stocks that I trade are traded within that um, um, market exchange. So we get rid of that because we don't need it. And then you got condition. I don't even know what that means. I never used it. I removed it. And then I keep it simple. Time, price, and size. The time, when it was bought. Price, at what price it was bought. And the size, how many stocks were purchased at that moment. See, once you press click, boom. You're good. Now you make it smaller. Now you might notice, Israel, thank you for what you just did, but are you crazy? This is too small. We can't even see it. You have to like go like like this. Like, but we're not trying to do that. So an option that TradeStation 10 offers is this. You can actually change the size of the font, which is really cool. So you go to settings, right? Settings. You go to Windows. You go to font, and then I never change the the font or the style. I might make it bold, but I leave it literally. I I leave it regular. Where I go is the size. So right now it's at seven. It's too small. So let's see what happens when I press nine. It gets bigger. Uh, I don't like how it looks. Uh, window again. Font. Let's go to ten. Okay, I like it more. You make it smaller and boom see now you see that it looks a little bit tight 
uh, a little bit congested. Another uh, something cool that you can do is this. You see how tight it is? You don't want it like that. So all you're gonna what you're gonna do is you can move it around. See? It gives space between the different um things that you have there. So the prices and the ticker symbol they don't like clash with one another. Now we do the same thing here with the price. We give it some space from the time. We make the size a little bit bigger just in case somebody buys like 10,000 shares so you can see it. But as you can see, it's still a little bit small. So you can play with it. Um, I'm going to go again, window, let's go 11. And I'm not going to touch it more than that because you already, got, you guys have the idea of how, how it works. Boom, price, separate it, give it space and everybody happy. See, now you can see the time, the price, and the size, which gives you a, a, a good idea of what you need to see when you are training, like when you're looking at the chart. Now we go here. Um, see, now you, let's make it a little bit more space. So it can look more pleasant when you see it. So here, you got the symbol, the high, the low, and the last. So now you're done here. We are done. However, you might ask, Israel, okay, now we got the time to sell, the charts, how can we make trades? How do you do it? So you have two options. This one, you can literally go here and click trade, and you can do the size, the type of order, and you can buy or sell short, but I don't use that. It just isn't necessary. <laughs> so what I do is, you go, I go to apps, and you get what is called the matrix. This is my favorite thing. I just love the matrix. You click matrix and it gives you this amazing tool. It's just an amazing tool. But just like always, every time you open it, uh, a new window, it's just a lot of stuff that you don't need. So what I do, what we, what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to move this a little bit to the right. A little bit, a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to make the, uh, the window big. <laughs> And we are going to get rid of a bunch of stuff that we don't need. So we go to column. We always go to quote first. And what we're we going to do right now is uh, eliminate almost half of the things that are here. For instance, account number. You don't need your account number. You already know it. You have it. They will give you an email with your account. And you can see it under your... Um, um, there's ways that you you will know with your what your account number is. So you don't need it. Take it out. Aces Inc. If you give me a million dollars to tell you right now what Aces Inc. is, I got no clue. I don't know. The quantity, um, no. Come on up, come on up, PL. Like, how much money have you? Are you making? No, you you don't need that. Um, it will show you under the, in the chart. It will show you below. You will see if you, how much money you're making, in uh, or how much money you're losing. So is this. Option here isn't necessary. You don't need that. Close PL, you don't need it because you will see it below in the price. And something about trade station as well as this, as well as that when you buy or short, it will let you know with, lit, with like a little uh, yellow line. If you're going, if you're green, you're making money. If you're red, you're losing within the chart. So you don't even have to check are you, if you're up or down. You are literally seeing it as it happening, as it's happening in the chart. So close PL, you don't need that. Buy. Open PL, you don't need it because, again, it would show you the broker in the chart and in below. You will see it under the, the, the chart if you are up and down. So remove. So now we are kept, we are left with symbol, with last, and that change, I don't use that, <laughs> precision. Now, something that, that I was telling you guys before is that I like to, it's good to have the bid. So I add the bid. And I add. I look for the ask, which is our crucial information when you're trading. Some people like to buy at the ask or at the bid, sell at the bid or sell at the ask. So it's good to have it so you can have an idea. I don't leave it in the times and sales because in the times and sales, I like to simplify the stuff. Here, we have a little more complex stuff that the, you'll use, but um, I leave the bid and the ask on the right side. I just got used to having it there. So now let's organize it. The symbol ticker, I will leave it, leave it there. On uh, the bid, I will put it next to the symbol. Um, the ask will be next to the bid. Um, I will leave the 
last there. And then something that I like to have is the average price. Uh, for those that don't know, the average price is, shows you uh, the average there and where you got filled. So let's say you bought stocks, uh, 100 shares are $4.50. But when you try to purchase it, the 100 shares, only um, a certain amount were filled at 450 So maybe there will be a slippage, a slippage of of three or two cents so what the broker does it average down the price in which you got filled so it might say four dollar and 52 cents you have an average in 100 shares i hope it makes sense so we got the symbol we got the bid we got the ask we got the last we got the average price in the position the position it will show you how many shares you bought or let's say you buy 500 shares and you sell 300 it will show you the the remaining so once you click boop clean just in case you guys hear like a little sound i have my dog named pokemon and he might he's very like needy sometimes it's annoying but i love him though anyway so now we gotta get rid of this mess that we have here because it's just a mess we go here columns detail plane and now open pl do we really need this no Orders? Do we need it? No, because we have the information already on 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 the top. The bid size? Yes. The bid size it will show you like how many shares are being bought at a particular price. So that information you need it. The price? Of course, you need that price. X size? Of course, the the X size. How many shares are being sold? So the volume bars you don't need it because you already have the volume in your chart, which makes no sense. The volume? Why would I have the volume if I already have it? In the chart so it makes no sense of keeping that there it's just a waste of space pop you click clean see how beautiful that is now you get a smaller boom and what you do is the following i put it the way that i had it set up i get it to the right corner boom. okay i think i have this the chart too big so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make it a little bit smaller But you guys have the idea, you know, which is the important part. So now, um, what you do is the following. You check if the, you like the font. You organize it a little bit like you did in the times and sales. Boom. You're giving us baby between the bid and the ask. And the last. Average price. Position. Um, what you do here, you can do the same thing here. You make it a little bit smaller. Or bigger depending on what you want to do um something that i do here is that um i go to the i don't change the font but i did i i made it bold so it can look a little bit bigger and it can look a little bit more aesthetically pleasant which was the word that i was looking for is a 20 dollar word and um you can make it bigger but you guys already know if you guys want to make it bigger click Settings, window, the font, and you change it. Let me see. And once you do that, you fix it again, and you're good to go. See how beautiful? This is very easy. Less than 30 minutes. That's all it took. And Israel, how to use the matrix? I would just make another video for that. Um, this is how you put your orders in, and here you set up the 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 type of of um, orders you want. I always leave auto limit and stop because the way that I trade is that I use stop orders and limit orders. I didn't use market orders. So through this, let's say the stock is at $3. Nah, let me change the stock. Nah, let me, let's leave Tesla. So shout out to my boy Elon Musk, man. So let's say um, I want to buy some shares, but I don't want to buy at $3, at $307. Uh, I can go lower and just put a limit order, but if I want to buy higher than three hundred and seven dollars, I can just go higher and put a stop order. So that's really cool. Here in the quantity, you can change it: three hundred, um, two hundred, a hundred, which is amazing. So let me. Hopefully, this works. If I move myself, I want you guys to pay attention here. So right now, this is not. Uh, 
showing any of uh when when the market is open you can see it in blue or red the reason that you see it like that is because the market is closed it's a holiday so when you put like 100 shares you will see the option here to buy market or sell market or to short and cover for those people that um buy market just because they trade using limit stops limit orders and stop and stop orders that doesn't mean that you can't do market you can definitely do it through the matrix see you can buy market and sell market and vice versa short market and cover market which is really cool so yeah wow this was really fast so i hope this video helped i know it will help because there's not that many videos especially uh short, a short this one that goes straight to the point um i hope you guys enjoy it and the final question that you guys might ask israel um once i have my layout uh, do i have to do this all the time no what would you do is simple you go to files workspaces and you can save once you press click save it will automatically be saved or you can save it on, in your computer at save workspace as and it will be saved you press save and then you will have it there forever unless you get your laptop stolen then you're screwed i know there's another way that you can save it in the within the software of trade station 10 but i don't know how to do that so hopefully i never get my laptop robbed but anyway um another final thing two things that i need to let you guys know is um this is how you link the windows because all these windows are separate from the from each other so the way you link it is that you go here this little thing here you click it and green you go again in another window green and you click here as well green and anytime you change let's say boom see it changed boom let's press this looks for another one x boom see how everything changed because every all the windows are linked now if you change the color of one of them they won't be like linked anymore another thing that you guys should check out is how cool is that you you don't necessarily need to go here to check for the stock you can literally just click in the chart and write it so let's write tesla right boom boom uh, starbucks boom uh x i don't even know what brand is this but it's just easy x and it's so easy to do so uh trade station 10 is a very easy platform to use uh, i hope this video was useful and yeah i really enjoyed making this video if you have any questions please leave a comment under the comment section and i will reply and let me see if i have anything else hmm man no that's it um that was it uh thank you so much for watching and i hope you guys find this video useful and see you guys soon